Hello, dear students. My name is uh, Dr. Unshvig Orzov. I am an uh, associate professor of the Department of Pathological Anatomy of Azerbaijan Medical University, as well as I am also the deputy uh, head of the Department on uh, Academic Affairs. First of all, I would like uh, to congratulate you for the beginning uh, the new education year and also uh, you are welcome to our department the department of the pathological anatomy of azerbaijan uh, medical university uh, we started our uh, uh, classes our lectures uh, on pathological anatomy uh, today uh, our, our first lecture Firstly, we'll discuss uh, about the uh, introduction to pathology, about the brief history of pathology, and about the methods of investigation uh, in uh, pathology. And in the next uh, second part of our lecture, uh, we have a discussion about the uh, intracellular uh, or parenchymatous degenerations. Uh, I hope uh, you heard about the pathology in our country, uh, as well as in the, uh, Russia. Uh, we call uh, this uh, subject as pathological anatomy. For example, in the uh, United States and in Europe, uh, uh, this subject also known as the anatomic pathology or the surgical pathology. It is a fundamental biomedical science that uh, studies the structural basis of pathological processes of human disease. Uh, there are some uh, branches of the uh, study of pathology, as well as the cell pathology, molecular pathology, uh, molecular basis, etiology, pathogenesis, morphology, and morphogenesis of pathological processes and diseases, uh, thanatogenesis, this is a science or study about death, pathomorphosis of disease, abnormal embryogenesis, classification of uh, diseases. In the first uh, part of my lecture, I wanted to explain uh, about the brief history of pathology. As you know, like the human uh, anatomy subject, the uh, anatomic pathology or the pathological anatomy is also uh, has a great history. And the documentation of disease uh, really begins with Egyptian medicine, where the most important source are the Edwin Smith papyrus and the papyrus Ebert about uh, 1550 BC. These records contain information on different types of bone injuries, trachoma, Nile Valley, ulcerating lumps, probably it was cancer, parasites, and other diseases. However, despite the many thousands of ritualistic and painstaking uh, involvement in for 5,000 years of successive Egyptian dynasties, this surviving papyri contain only slender body of information on pathological anatomy. Hypocrisy, of course, uh, we take as the father of the medicine, these great scientists. The ideas related to Hypocrisy, of course, and his school had an enormous impact on Greek and Roman medicine. With his humoral theory of the nature of disease, Hippocrates influenced medicine until the Renaissance and beyond. Despite the flaws of this theory, Hippocratic writers left remarkably clear descriptions of many pathological features, such as wound inflammation, tumors, hemorrhoids, malaria, and tuberculosis. Animal dissection was practiced in this time, but human dissection 
was not part of medical practice. I'd like to Aristotle, who can be considered as one of the founders of zoology. The first dissections of humans are attributed to the Alexandrian scientists Herophilus and Erasistratus. Unfortunately, their writings are all lost, and we know of their work all secondhand. The Roman writers Celsus and Tertullian stated that the Alexandrians not all dissected bodies of the dead, but also performed vivisection of living criminals. Here you see the painting by Jax Lewis David. Uh, here uh, illustrated the erasistratus discovers the cause of the illness of uh, Antichos. Pathology in Rome. At the end of the Hellenistic era, many elements of Greek culture and medicine survived and were exported to newly emerging Rome. The early Roman practitioners of medicine either came from Greece or had received training in the Greek method. The most important early Roman medical writer was Cornelius Celsius. He was apparently not a physician, but an educated man with an extensive knowledge of literature. He wrote Dere Medicina in eight volumes. Book third contains the classic definition of inflammation. Not a vero inflammationis, sunt quator rubor a tumor, cum calore et dolore, until now learned by every medical student, and also will discuss it uh, in the, uh, the study of inflammation. Human dissections uh, keys to perform been unlawful in Rome, and the medical practice entered the doldrums uh, for a hundred years. Fortunately, the second century gave us a literal giant Galen. Born in uh, Pergamos, Asia Minor, he is by many considered as the greatest medical figure of that time and maybe of all time. Galen followed the Greek concepts, including the Hippocratic care of the four humors, but broadened his education and views by extensive travel, including time spent at the great school in Alexandria. By dissection of animals, such as the pigs, monkeys, he realized the importance of such structures as the, the current nerve and the urinary system. He described the crab-like growth of cancer and introduced bloodletting. Although this dispute continues, he is variously attributed to adding the fifth sign of inflammation, either loss of function uh, or throbbing pulsation. Galen's views of pathology are found in his books, Seeds of Disease and Abnormal Tumors. And uh, there are uh, some popular Galen's aphorisms, uh, that, uh, such as the employment is nature's physician and is essential the human happiness, or another one, confidence and hope to more good than physic. Probably you heard also about Abi Sena or Abu Ali ibn Sina, uh, one of the greatest writers of the Arab period. Uh, he wrote the canon medicine uh, that based on the doctrines of Galen and Aristotle and remained until the 15th century the best single work in medicine. According to manuscripts from the early 14th century, Bologna practiced human dissections as early as 1270 AD. As a regular part of the medical teaching for the study of anatomy, but also to study disease and legal aspect of death. The Florentine physician Antonio Benivieni was recorded case histories and performed autopsies on some of his patients. After his death, 111 cases, among which were uh, 20 postmortems, were published in a little classic about the hidden causes of disease. 
Andreas Vizelius was not a keen follower of Calvin, intending, according to a German contemporary, to publish his mythological observations as a separate work. However, if completed, this work has never been found. The first to attempt formally uh, to codify this developing new knowledge was uh, Jean Fernel, uh, who after a career in mathematics and astrology might in some ways be regarded as a full-fledged pathologist. His main work, Medicina, one part called the Pathology Libri, became standard throughout uh, Europe. Fernal classified disease as general and special ones and distinguished symptoms and signs much as we do today. He diagnosed at autopsy a case of acute appendicitis and uh, was one of the first to suggest the syphilitic origin of some aneurysms. The new dawn began only with William Harvey, the publication of De Motu Cordis et uh, Sanguinis in 1628 revolutionized the medicine and concept of disease causation. The Giovanni Battista Morgani in 1706, uh, 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 Morgani gained instant fame with his first important book, Ad Adversaria Anatomica. His opus magnum, uh, the Sedivas at Causes uh, Morborum per Anatomen uh, Intagaitis about the seeds and causes of disease for the anatomical investigation was only published in 1761 uh, 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 when he was 79 years. John Hunter was author of the venereal disease and the uh, treatise of the blood, inflammation, and gunshot uh, wounds, which was published by his uh, executors in uh, uh, 1794. Hunter described inflammation, regarding it first as a defensive mechanism and second as a reparative process. With him, the doctrine of laudable pass uh, of the Gallian died. Marie uh, Francois uh, Xavier Bicha, by simple method, for example, cooking without use of the microscope, he was able to identify 25 types of tissues, improving the foundation for tissue based disease. In his autopsies, he correlated the clinical finding with histology, a term that really gained currency 50 years later. He died at the age of uh, 31 of tuberculosis. In uh, Britain, Thomas Hodgkin, a general physician with a broad range of interests, was one of the first to pursue the lead of Bichat, describing the pathological change in tissues. In his twin papers, on some morbid appearance of the absorbent glands and the spleen, he records his finding in seven autopsies, including recognizable cases of tuberculosis and also the diseases that 30 years later was by Samuel Wilkes given his name Hodgkin disease. British pathology was also strengthened by men, uh, by men as Richard Bright and Thomas Edison. Bright is famous for his extensive studies about the relation between kidney disease and edema and Edison for his recognition of pernicious anemia. The role of microscopy in pathology became evident in a kind of competition between Karl von Rokitansky and his uh, one of the one-time pupil, uh, Rudolf Virko. Von Rokitansky considered disease states to result from abnormalities, uh, anomalies of the blood in, uh, inducing uh, still more blood anomalies. Uh, Rudolf Virchow, by many regarded as the greatest figure in the history of pathology, was a student of jo Johannes Müller in Berlin. Only one step remained, the recognition of continuity of cellular life, a step that Virchow took as expressed in his 
immortal aphorism omnicellular and cellular. Uh, Wirkov's uh, new insights resulted in a collection of 20 of his lectures into his most important work, uh, DA Cellular Pathology, in medical schools uh, throughout Europe. Inspectors of the deed and the curators of the museums began to be replaced by lectures in morbid anatomy than by professors of pathology. Here you see the portrait of the Rudolf uh, Wirkow and the uh, paper uh, from his famous uh, book, The Cell uh, Pathology. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, after the uh, of Birkov uh, and start a new area in the pathology and the uh, modern pathology continue to be uh, developed by the modern uh, methods uh, that we will uh, discuss in next part of our lectures. So the pathology is divided into two parts, two branches, the general pathology and the special pathology. The general pathology studies alteration, inflammation, hemodynamic disorders, adaptation, tumors, and etc. that we will study in this semester. And this next semester we will study with you the uh, special pathology that studies organ pathology, as well as the um, kidneys, uh, kidney pathology, or renal pathology, the gastrointestinal uh, tract pathology, liver pathology, pulmonary pathology, cardiovascular pathology, and etc. So we study the uh, diseases uh, in the body in some levels such as the in the organismal levels in the organ levels in tissue cell levels ultrastructural and the molecular uh, levels we use uh, three methods uh, in the pathological anatomy biopsy autopsy and experiment uh, biopsy is the removal of tissue from a living subject to determine morphological change autopsy this post-mortem examination of a corpse to determine the causes and the manner of death and to evaluate any disease or injury that may be present. And the experiment, this is the modeling of pathological process on animals and sub uh, subsequent post-mortem examination. Uh, I add here uh, the slide from your uh, textbook uh, that, uh, about the methods of biopsy. Uh, one of them is excision biopsy, the obtaining of samples by excision from the pathological area as a rule using diagnosis of disease of vagina, cervix, uterine cervix, oral cavity, etc. Next one is fine needle biopsy, the obtaining of tissue samples and uh, flues by searing, usually for psychological examination. Next one, guided biopsy sampling of the abnormal tissue by endoscopic methods such as the gastroscopy, bronchoscopy, colposcopy, and etc. Then incision biopsy, tissue samples obtained during surgical procedures such as tonsillectomy, gastrectomy, intestinal resection. One of the methods of the biopsy is exfoliative cytology that cells obtained from the surfaces of uh, tissues or by centrifugal body flues are smeared on a slide. For example, pop smears for, uh, from a uh, uterine cervix. Uh, but in general, we can classify the uh, biopsies into two types. The, uh, first, the needle biopsies and second one, surgical biopsies. Needle biopsies also divided into uh, four uh, types. The, one, uh, the fine needle aspiration biopsy, coral needle biopsy, vacuum assist biopsy, and image guided biopsy. And there are two uh, subtypes of the surgical biopsy, such as the excisional biopsy and incisional biopsy. The uh, needle biopsy procedures uh, include first a fine needle aspiration. During fine needle aspiration, a long Clean needle is inserted into suspicious area. A searing is used to draw out fruit and cells for analysis. Core needle biopsy, a large needle with a cutting tip, is used during core needle biopsy to draw a, a column of tissue out of a suspicious area. Then vacuum assist biopsy. 
uric vacuum acid biopsy, a suction device increases the amount of fluid and cells that is extracted through the needle. This can reduce the number of times the needle must be interested to collect an adequate sample. Image guided biopsy combines an imaging procedure such as X ray, computerized tomography, a magnetic resonance imaging, or ultrasound with a needle biopsy. Image guided biopsy allows uh, the doctor to access suspicious areas that can't be filled through the skin, such as abnormalities on the liver, lung, or prostate. Using real time images, doctor can make sure the needle uh, reaches the correct spot. Surgical, uh, surgical biopsy uh, include the incisional and excisional biopsy. The incisional biopsy removes only part of the suspicious area enough to make a diagnosis. But the excisional biopsy removes the entire tumor or abnormal area with or without trying, trying to take out an age of normal breast tissue. It depended on the reason for the uh, excisional biopsy. Here uh, you see the illustration uh, of the fine needle aspiration, then uh, core needle biopsy from the progress, and the incisional and excisional surgical uh, biopsies. Also the uh, types of the uh, excisional biopsy, shave biopsy, and the punch biopsies. The types of the surgical biopsies. How is this to proceed after a biopsy or surgery? Uh, from histology course, also you familiar with these procedures that is to remove during the uh, during during the biopsy or surgery uh, must be cut into thin section, placed on slides and stained with dyes before it can be examined under a microscope. Two methods are used to make the tissue firm enough to cut into thin sections paraffin embedded or permanent section and frozen section. All tissue samples are prepared as permanent section, but sometimes frozen sections are also prepared. The permanent sections are prepared by placing the tissue in fixative, usually we use the formalin, to preserve the tissue, processing in its throat and additional solutions, and then placing it in paraffin box. After the box, as hardened, the tissue is cut into very thin slices, which are placed on slices and stained. The process normally takes several days. A permanent section provides the best quality for examination by a pathologist and produces more accurate results than a frozen section. What's the frozen section? Frozen sections are prepared by freezing and slicing the tissue sample. It can be done in about 15 to 20 minutes while the patient in, is in the operating room. Frozen section are done when an immediate answer is needed. For example, to determine whether the tissue is cancerous so as to guide the surgeon during the course of an operation. How long after the tissue sample is taken will the pathology report be ready? The pathologist sends the pathology report to the doctor within 10 days after the biopsy or surgery is performed. Pathology reports are written in technical medical language. Patients may want to ask their doctors to give them a copy of the pathology report and to explain the report of them, uh, to them. Patients also may wish to keep a copy of their pathology report in their own records. What information does a pathology report usually include? The pathology report may include the following information. The patient's information, name, birth date, biopsy date, cross description, color, weight, and size of tissue as seen by the naked eye. Microscopic description, how the sample looks under the microscope and how it compares with normal cells. The diagnosis, as well as the histopathological diagnosis, names of disease, I see the international classification of diseases 10 code. If it is a tumor, uh, we have the additional uh, information, type of tumor, cancer and grade, tumor size that measures in centimeters, tumor margins. There are three possible findings when a biopsy 
sample is the entire tumor. Positive margin means that the cancer cells are found the age of the material removed. Negative for not involved clear or free margins mean that no cancer cells are found at the outer edge and closed margins are neither negative and positive. Other information, usually most about samples that have been sent for other tests or a second opinion and uh, final the pathology signature and name at the address of the laboratory. Now, uh, I want to discuss about the autopsy. What is an autopsy? Uh, the translational meaning is the see yourself. It is a post-mortem examination performed to determine the cause of death. Uh, autopsy uh, starts by the physical examination that includes the two parts, external and internal examinations. External examination include the physical outer layers for injuries cause of death, but internal examination uh, include the examination of the internal organs and tissues, evidence of disease, trauma, toxic substances, organ failure, and etc. The external uh, examination uh, has the following steps. First, photograph. Then, uh, sample taken from the near here, males, uh, then undressed, examined for wounds, uh, for the lacerations, abrasions, uh, bruises, and me uh, measured weight and clean. Internal examination. Uh, first, we have to uh, open the body cavities, the body, using the incisions. Uh, in general, we use the two types of the incisions, the Y and T shape. Incisions, the Y shaped incisions start beyond each ear, down the neck, uh, mid or uh, mid sternum, and continue to the groin. For suspected strangulation, 50% no external signs, and they show fractures, hyoid uh, bone. T shaped incisions start from each shoulder, mid top of the sternum, continue to the groin. Better looking finished. Uh, product and here you see the uh, Y uh, shaped incision that using in the autopsy. Uh, I add here uh, the uh, another kinds of the incisions that uh, illustrated in the your text in your textbook that include the uh, main incision that start uh, from the mandibulum that. Uh, finished in the groin, uh, then lesh case uh, incision, another one, the fissures incisions, the lines that they illustrate the uh, orientation of the incision, another one, the McCollum or Mellor incis incision, uh, then Medvedev incision, and the Abrikosov incision. The incisions used to open the cervical or thoracic and abdominal cavities. Uh, then uh, internal examination uh, continue uh, for opening the body cavities. The minimally three body cavities must be open. That include the cranial, thoracic, and abdominal cavities, and the chest cavity in a cut open uh, with saws. Then we have to remove the internal organs. In general, there are two methods for the removing the organ. The uh, lettuce and muscle method at all organs at once, then uh, gons and block method, organs removed in sections. Then organs wait and examine. Uh, and then later I will uh, add the, uh, another methods that illustrated, that demonstrated in your textbook. Uh, then we continue the examination of the brain. The incision starts from a uh, point behind one ear or top of head to point behind the opposite ear. Scalp piled away from the skull, forward and back. Front flap over the face, rear flap over the neck. Skull cut with electric saw. I create a 
ball. Brain cut from spinal cord, lift out the skull for further examination. And here uh, I add the, uh, another message that uh, fixed in your te textbook, uh, the main classic method for the internal organs. In this method, the internal organs are examined as four separately complexes. The oral, first the oral, cervical, and thoracic cavity organs. Second one, stomach, pancreas, duodenum, liver, and omental. Third, spleen, intestines, and mesenteria. And fourth, kidneys, adrenal glands, ureters, all lesser pelvic cavity organs, abdominal aorta, and vena cava inferior. It was the main classic method. Then, total evisceration method, or the Shores method. The cervical, thoracic, and abdominal organs are examined as full organ complex. And Virkov methods, each internal organ is examined separately. Abrikosov methods, internal organs are examined by systems, separately systems, such as the pulmonary system or the respiratory system, uh, digestive system, urinary system, reproductive system, etc. The Kyle Kerner method, internal organs are examined without removing from the body. And finally, we uh, prepare the autopsy protocol that include the following information, passport information, clinical diagnosis, external examination, internal examination, pathological anatomic diagnosis, review of disease history report, clinical anatomical uh, report, uh, and description and the results of microscopic investigation. Uh, review of disease history uh, report, meaning that review of the medical history. Uh, report uh, and uh, I wanted to uh, focus here that it's very important to take the microscopic investigation uh, from internal organ during the autopsy uh, from the liver, from the uh, lungs, from the heart, uh, maybe from the endometrium if is if if she is the woman. And now uh, I want to explain about the methods of investigation in the pathology. Uh, as you know from the histology course uh, for the microscopy, we use the two types of the microscopy, the light microscopy and electron microscopy. The, that light microscopy uh, also here we use the uh, routine classic staining method, method such as the hematoxylin and the uh, histochemistry methods, the special staining methods such as the one gizon, microfuxin, uh, orsein, silvering, and etc. And uh, modern methods in morphology are the immunohistochemistry, electron microscopy, inside of hybridization, and polymerase chain reaction. Uh, immunohistochemical techniques based on specific interaction of tissue and cellular antigens with specially derived antibodies bearing the different levels. Uh, opportunities in immunohistochemistry you know, determination of cells belonging to a particular tissue and identification of individual products, such as the abnormal proteins, rules of cellular and intercellular signals, synthesis of certain proteins, glycoproteins, and lipoproteins. And here you see the illustration of on direct immunohistochemistry chemistry and immunofluorescence methods. Uh, Immunohistochemistry chemistry is useful uh, staining methods in the pathology uh, that in daily in our cases. Uh, in normal epithelia, high uh, molecular weight cytokeratins, so cytokeratin 5 and cytokeratin 14 stain, uh, stain basal epithelia in the prostate gland. The P63 uh, is a detected in prostate basal epithelium nuclei in normal prostate. However, it is negative in uh, malignant tumors uh, of the uh, prostate uh, gland. Thought the P63 is useful as a differential marker for benign and malignant tumors of the prostate uh, gland. So here you see the uh, process-specific antigen antibody, PCA, uh, 
during uh, using uh, in the prostate carcinoma if uh, the cell stage stains uh, by this uh, marker positively we can uh, confirm the prostatic uh, adenocarcinoma or another one renal cell carcinoma anti uh, antibody that uh, we use in uh, kidney uh, tumors another sample uh, is 100 antibody that uh, identified as A and B subunits and its uh, marker belongs to the family of calcium binding proteins such as the calmodulin and troponin C. Uh, and this uh, antibody is 100 stains, melanocytes, schwannomas, peripheral neural tissue, and astrocytes, and benign and malignant melanomas at their metastasis. Uh, electron uh, microscopy used to study the details of cell structure, detection of viruses, bacteria, immune complex deposits. Examples using the oncology, the Burbeck granules in histiocytosis X, in the oncology, the uh, z test in rhabdomyosarcoma cells, uh, uh, very high, very uh, uh, widely used in the nephrology, in the renal pathology. Uh, for the diagnosis of the glomerular nephritis. Here you see the samples of the electron microscopy that used in the pathological diagnosis. Here you see the Birbeck granules in the histiocytosis X. Then electron microscopic dense deposits in the basement membrane uh, of the uh, mesangio proliferative glomerular nephritis type 2. There are dark electron dense deposits within a basement membrane that often uh, coalesce to form a ribbon-like mass of deposits. Then uh, here you see the uh, light microscope of the post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. Uh, immunofluorescence, uh, also very useful uh, methods in the pathology. Uh, for example, the deposits of the immunoglobulin G and the complement tree along the glomerular capillary wall, immunoglobulin M only in small amounts, immunoglobulin A in another diagnosis we use. Here, uh, before I showed you here the, uh, the not neutrophils and the post vector glomerular in the light microscopy. And pay attention here, uh, when we use the uh, immunofluorescence uh, methods, it is highlights the complement tree in the uh, renal glomeruli and we easily can uh, confirm the diagnosis of the uh, postreptococcal glomerulonephritis. Another electron microscopic diagnosis of the postreptococcal glomerulonephritis that here we see the uh, electron in the electron microscopy. In cytohybridization, a method for detection of specific sequences of DNA or RNA in situ. It is based on principle of complementary interaction of DNA or RNA in specimen with level nucleotide sequence or probe. It is used for detection of viral genomes, detection of mutant genes, detection of active protein synthesis, uh, immunohistochemistry data validation. Polymerase chain reaction, PCR, method for detection of specific sequences of DNA or RNA, uh, RNA in any biological samples. PCR is an in vitro amplification of nucleic acids triggered by synthetic oligonucleotide primers. Differences from the inside hybridization. Because of amplification is more sensitive and usually not combined with morphology. And uh, here we finished uh, our first uh, chapter of uh, our lecture. Uh, now we start uh, the second part of our lecture. Uh, all structural change of the cells, extracellular matrix, and organs associated with functional disturbances are called the alteration. Alteration may be reversible or subliteral and irreversible lateral. 
all alterations occurred in the cellular level are grouped as cell pathology. Alteration occurred in the tissue level is consist of degeneration and necrosis, which are the sequential periods. What means degeneration? Uh, or in Russian literature, we use the dystrophy. Degeneration is retrogressive change in cells and tissues due to the, the fragmentation of cells metabolism characterized by abnormal structure and functional change. These mechanisms are divided into two groups, the cellular mechanism autoregulation and extracellular mechanisms, such as the blood circulation, limb circulation, neuroendocrine and neurohumoral mechanism, and etc. Morphogenetic mechanisms of degeneration include infiltration, decomposition or phanerosis, transformation, and abnormal synthesis. Uh, infiltration, the overloading of cells and extracellular substances by abnormal materials circulating in blood and limb. For example, the infiltration of lipoproteins through the intima of arteries and accumulation between the intima and media in arteriosclerosis. The composition or phanerosis, accumulation of component substance elements in the cell or extracellular matrix resulting in metabolic change. For example, large amount of lipid droplets accumulated in the cardiac muscle cells due to the destroying of lipoproteins in hypoxia and development of parenchymatous fatty degeneration in the heart. Transformation, synthesis of single substance from the initial materials which have been intended for synthesis of different substances according to metabolic disturbances. For example, using the deoxyphenylalanine only for synthesis of melanin in the skin in the idiopathic uh, eye distance disease. Abnormal synthesis, synthesis of the abnormal substances in cells and tissues which normally must be absent. For example, synthesis of amyloid protein in amyloidosis, synthesis of abnormal proteins in the cytoplasm of liver cells during the alcohol hepatitis and formation of the millary bodies or the uh, Benz Jones proteins uh, during the myeloma. Let me classify the degenerations. The classification principles of degenerations include the according to the prevalence of morphological change in specialized elements of parenchyma or stroma that we divide the, can divide the degeneration into three groups. First, the intracellular or parenchymatous degenerations. Second one, extracellular or stromal degenerations and mixed degenerations. According to the kinds of disarranged metabolites that uh, include the proteinaceous degenerations, fatty degenerations, carbohydrate degenerations, and mineral degenerations. According to the involvement of hereditary factors, there are genetically determined and occurred. And according to the distribution of process in the organism, we can uh, divide the local degenerations and extended or generalized uh, degenerations. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss about the intracellular degenerations, that the, about the extracellular or the mesenchymal degenerations and the mixed degenerations we'll, we'll have discussion in the next lecture. Intracellular degenerations also divided into three groups. Uh, proteinaceous intracellular degenerations, or we call it as the dysproteinosis, fatty intracellular degenerations or lipidosis, and carbohydrate intracellular degenerations. Proteinaceous intracellular degenerations also divided into three groups. Hyaline droplet degenerations, hydropic degenerations and squamous degenerations. degenerations. Hyaline droplet degenerations uh, it uh, taken uh, from the hyalos, Greek term of hyalos meaning the glassy, translucent. According to the coagulation accumulation of proteins in the cell, appear the medium or large size pink staining, homogeneous glassy cytoplasmic droplet uh, called as the Hyalines. The hyaline droplets increase in amount 
MERS and cause the destruction of organelles. Process is irreversible and results to coagulative or dry necrosis of a cell. This regeneration is best occurs in kidneys, in the axillial cells of convoluted tubules in the liver and myocardium. Here you see the hairline droplet degenerations in the axillial cells of gallbladder. Here you see the hyaline material inside of the cells uh, in, that stands in pink or about uh, in uh, blue uh, stains the nuclei of the cells. Hydropic degenerations or synonym is ballooning degenerations. Uh, Colliquative degenerations of cytoplasmic proteins due to action of catalyte, uh, catalytic enzymes. At this result, the acute cell swelling. And in the cytoplasm of the cells, we see the abundant, uh, very sized, open, pink colored vacuoles. And the organs became the grossly enlarged, pale, heavy. This process also is irreversible and results with. with colliquative uh, or wet necrosis of cells. For example, the hydropic degenerations of covering and glandular axilla of small intestines in cholera, or here you see the hydropic degenerations in the convoluted tubules of kidneys. Here you see the separately cells, this is the section of the convoluted tubules, these are the uh, covering axillial cells. Here you see the cell borders and the nucleus of the cells that stand in blue and in the cytoplasm we see the hydro hydropic or ballooning degeneration. And finally the squamous degenerations. Squamous de degenerations uh, mainly occurs in the squamous ectilium, the squamous keratinized and squamous non-keratinized ectilium. Causes of the squamous degenerations may be a vitaminosis, chronic inflammations, the developmental pathologies of skin, different viral infections, and etc. There are two types of the squamous degenerations, hyperkeratosis and leukoplakia. Hyperkeratosis mainly develop in the uh, squamous keratinized epithelium, in the, for example, in the epidermis, uh, and often associated with the presence of an abnormal quantity of keratin and also usually accompanied by an increase in the granular layer. As the corneal layer normally varies greatly in thickness in the different size, some experiences is needed to access minor degrees of hyperkeratosis. It can be caused by vitamin A deficiency or chronic exposure to arsenic. Here you, you see the section of the skin, and here we see the epidermis and the dermis. Uh, here you see the hyperkeratosis uh, in the skin, that shortly uh, called as the HK. Uh, ichthyosis is a heterogeneous family of or at least uh, 28 generalized most genetic skin uh, disorders. That in, in this disease we can find the uh, hyperkeratotic uh, hyperkeratosis. All types of ichthyosis have dry, thicken, scaly, or flaky skin with hyperkeratosis. In many types, there is cracked skin, which is said to resemble the scales on a fish. The word ichthyosis comes from the ancient Greek ichthys, meaning fish. The severity of symptoms can vary enormously from the mildest, most common types such as ichthyosis vulgaris, which may be mistaken for normal dry skin, up to life-threatening conditions such as the uh, harlequin type ichthyosis. Ichthyosis vulgaris accounts for more than 95% of cases, and here you see the patients with the ichthyosis. But leukoplakia, appearance of squamous material in another size. For example, in the oral cavity, uterine cervix that where the uh, covering ectherium is squamous, non keratinized ectherium. The lake of plakia usually is not dangerous, but it can sometimes be serious. Although most lake of plakia pests are non cancerous, benign, some show early signs of cancer. 
many concerts on the flow of the mouth uh, beneath the tongue occur next to areas of lecoplakia. Here in this illustration, you see the uh, areas of the uh, lecoplakia of the tongue. Now, let me discuss about the intracellular fatty degenerations, synonyms, parenchymatosis, lipidosis, or steatosis. They may be inherited and acquired. Acquired lipidosis occurs much more frequently. Fatty degeneration implies the presence of multiple small droplets of fat seen as vacuoles with distinct borders. Main cause is hypoxia. Hypoxia results uh, by the anaerobic oxidation. Uh, when the anaerobic oxidation starts in the cells, it means it, it uh, results the uh, the solution of the life of proteins to the lipids and the proteins. A protein is used for the ATP synthesis, but the lipids are accumulated in the cytoplasm, fuses one with another, and form a droplets. Intracellular fatty degenerations particularly occurs in cardiac muscle cells, hepatocytes, and tubular epithelium of the kidney. Uh, here you see the gross uh, and the microscopic. Uh, illustration of the fatty degenerations of the heart. Here you see the yellow uh, bands uh, in the endocardium that we call at the tiger effect in myocardium and fatty degeneration of myocardium. Uh, inside of the cytoplasm of the cardiomyocytes, we see the accumulation of the fat, fatty uh, droplets or the intracellular fatty degenerations of the liver. Here you see the liver biopsy, and uh, here we see the macrovesicular steatosis with the uh, micronodular cirrhotic area. And here, uh, because we use the hematoxylin eosin staining method, we found the uh, change cell as the uh, signal ring cells, MP, inside that the fat uh, pressed the nuclei uh, in the peripheral part of the cells. Uh, here also the uh, liver biopsy, needle biopsy. Here we see in one side we see the portal tract and the normal hepatocyte, but the mostly areas of the liver tissue uh, change with the steatosis. We call this hepatosteatosis. Because uh, during the hematoxylin eosin methods, the, uh, we uh, lost the uh, fat, we use the special staining methods, you know, uh, sorry, the histochemistral uh, methods for obtaining the uh, fats. Here you see the uh, using the Sudan 4 or the red O stain that uh, stains the fat in uh, red, or osmium tetroxide. Uh, stains that stains the fat in uh, black. Hereditary lipidosis, uh, it is the hereditary abnormality of lipid metabolism that results in abnormal amounts of lipid deposition. Classification is typically based on, on the responsible enzymatic deficiency and type of lipid involved. Such enzymatic activity takes place in the lysosomes and abnormal products appear as lysosomal storage diseases. Sphingolipidosis make up the largest portion of recognized lipidosis, including abnormal metabolism of gangliosidase, the ceramides, and thebrosides. Uh, today we'll discuss about the four types of disease, the Cauchy disease, or cerebrosis, uh, lipidosis, Neumann pix disease, sphingo, uh, myelin lipidosis, tay sachs disease, gangliosidosis, and normal landing disease, generalized gangliosidosis. Gaucher's disease, another uh, name is cerebrosin lipidosis, the genetically deficit of uh, glycocerebrosidase enzyme. Uh, and during this uh, defi deficiency of this enzyme, uh, the, uh, the uh, lipids accumulated in the central nerve system, bone marrow, liver, and spleen cells. The uh, Gaucher cells are swollen macrophages filled with abundant lipids. There are three main subtypes of Gaucher disease. Type 
one disease is most common. It involves bone disease, anemia, and enlarged spleen and low platelets, thrombocytopenia. Type 1 affects both children and adults. It is most common in the Ashkenazi Jewish population. Type 2 disease usually begins in infancy with severe neurologic involvement. This form can lead to rapid early death. Type 3 may cause liver, spleen, and brain problems. People with this type may live into adulthood. And here you see the, uh, you see the patients with uh, Gaucher disease. And here you see the Gaucher cells, as we said, this is the uh, macrophage that derive from the uh, reticular endothelial system. Neumann Pick's disease or sphingomyelin lipidosis, genetically deficit of sphingomyelinase enzyme, occurs in the cells of central nerve system, bone marrow, liver, and spleen. Pick cells are major morphological criteria, diagnostic criteria here. Here you see the here are pig cells. Tay Sachs disease or gangliazidosis, another name is infantile amyrotic idiocy. Hereditary de a deficit of hexamino hexaminodase enzyme are present in these diseases, and lipids are accumulated in the central nerve system, neural plexus, retina, liver cells, and spleen cells. Morphological diagnosis. Uh, we can confirm by the rectal biopsy of Meissner plexus of large intestines. A normal landing disease uh, or generalized gangliosidosis occur during the deficiency of the galact galactosidase enzyme. And lipids are accumulated in the central nerve system, neural plexus, bone marrow, kidney, spleen, and other cells. Now, let me discuss the final chapter of our lecture about the intracellular carbohydrate degenerations. The most valuable is carbo in carbohydrate metabolism, disturbance is glycogen, glycosamine glycans, and glycoproteins. The most important in this pathology is glycogen metabolism disturbance occurs under diabetes mellitus, that about the, the uh, separated diseases will have discussion next uh, term next semester. In case insulin deficiency in blood, the tissues utilize sugar insufficiency and sufficiently causing sugar level increase in blood, blood hyperglycemia, and glycogen quantity in tissues decreases. Kidneys remove sugar excess with urine. We call this glucosuria. Is development called diabetic glomerular sclerosis. In the results of glucose polymerization, under it is resorption from plasma, ultra filtrated glycogen is accumulated in tubus ectilium, mesangium, and membranes of glomerular vessels. The most of it, it is in epithelial cells and in the Henle's loop lumens, narrow segment. Epithelium in these sections of nephron becomes high with light and foamy cytoplasm. Changes in kidneys under diabetes mellitus are finalized with sclerosis development called diabetic glomerular sclerosis. Uh, under uh, glycogen stor storage diseases or uh, glycogenosis, uh, glycogenosis. Deficiency of any one of the enzymes involved in degradation or synthesis. Depending on the type of defect, tissue distribution, type of accumulated product, the 12 forms more important. Uh, here you see the, some examples of this disease type 1, von QK disease or hepatorenal type, type 2, Pompe disease, generalized type, liver, heart, skeletal muscles involved. Uh, type 5, McArdle syndrome, they affected all the skeletal uh, muscles. And we use the biopsy methods and the uh, special histochemical method, the periodic acid stains and base carmines for detection of the uh, glycogen. 
uh, intracellular carbohydrate degenerations. The, uh, now we we'll discuss about the glycoprotein metabolism disturbances. Uh, under glycoprotein metabolism disturbances, mucus degenerations develop. The typical manifestation of it is mucoviscidosis or cystic fibrosis, which is a systemic disease, characteristic of which is high viscosity of mucose, causing development of irritation uh, cysts and sclerosis in pancreas, bronchi, digestive, and other glands. Besides that, this, this degeneration is often observed under catheter inflammation of nose, mucous tunic, rhinitis, mucous tunic of larynx, laryngitis, bronchi, bronchitis, stomach gastritis, etc. Macroscopically, grossly, excess of mucus is seen on a mucosa, and this mucus trickles down from the surface. Microscopic, microscopically, wine glass-like cells appear in mucus uh, tunic and release mucus. Also, discrimination or cell necrosis up, is observed Glands excretory ducts are clogged with mucus, which is confined with cyst formation. Here you see the mucoviscidosis or cystic fibrosis of pancreas. An autopsy, pancreas is mucoid and slightly smaller than normal. And in microscopic examination, we see the abnormally whisked secretions from exocrine glands around eosinophilic masses distending and obstructed pancreatic ducts leading to destruction of parenchyma and fibrosis. Glycoproteins and glycosaminoglycans uh, uptake in organ stroma is accompanied with collagen fibers as well as cartilage and adipose tissue substitute with mucose-like mass. Damaged tissue cells have star-like shape. This process is called tissue sliming and it is absorbed under cachexia and myxedema. Carbohydrates uptake sequestrants can be reversible and under process progress, they become semi-transparent, looks like mucus, uh, colliquative necrosis develops. Now we uh, uh, finished our lecture. Thank you for uh, attention.